I'm Teacher Ren. Welcome to another Tech Vlog in Practical Research 2. For today's topic, we're going to learn the different kinds of quantitative research design. In this topic, here's the most essential learning competency that you need to master. Describe the kinds of quantitative research. Do you know what is a research design? Ang research design ay naglalaman ng malino na plano sa kung paano mo bibigyan ng direksyon o kasagutan ang iyong mga katanungan sa iyong research. Nagsisilbi itong framework o outline upang maisagawa mo ng maayos ang iyong pananaliksip. Ngayon, upang mas maging malinaw para sa iyo, ating pag-aralan ang iba't ibang classification of research design. Quantitative research designs are generally classified as experimental and non-experimental as the following matrix shows. In the diagram, it is divided into two. We have the quantitative design and the qualitative research design. However, in this lesson, we'll be focusing on the quantitative design. Isang halimbawa ng quantitative research design ay ang experimental research design. Experimental research is concerned primarily with cost and effect relationship. Ibig sabihin, layunin ng experimental research na sukatin lamang ang epekto at pagkakaiba ng mga variables sa pamamagitan ng manipulation or control sa mga ito. This design utilizes the principle of research also, known as the method of difference. Ang ibig sabihin naman ng method of difference ay ang pag-alam ng magiging epekto ng isang variable sa isang bagay at anong pagbabago ang maobserbahan. So, what is a variable? A variable is anything that may assume varied or numerical or categorical variables. Ibig sabihin, tumutukoy ito sa anumang bagay na pwedeng i-observe o i-measure tulad ng edad, kasarian, oras, at iba pa. These are the types of experimental research design. 1. True experimental. It contained three key features. Independent and dependent variables, pre-testing and post-testing, and experimental and control groups. Sa isang true experiment, ang effect ng isang intervention ay tinitest sa pamagitan ng pag-compare ng dalawang groups, na kung saan ang isang group ay ina-expose sa intervention na ang tawag ay experimental group, tinitawag rin itong minsan na treatment group. At yung isang group naman ay hindi ina-expose sa intervention, na ang tawag naman ay control group. Number 2. Quasi-experimental it involves the manipulation of an independent variable without the random assignment of participants to conditions or orders of conditions. Ibig sabihin, halos pares nito ang true experiment design ngunit ang pagkakaiba ay hindi ito ina-assign randomly ang mga participants of the study na maging treatment group or control group. And number three, pre-experimental. Or the simplest form of research design, in a pre-experiment, either a single group or multiple groups are observed after some agent or treatment presumed to cause change. Dito naman, walang komparasyon na gagawin sa pagitan ng experimental group at control group dahil lahat ng groups ay inexposed sa intervention. Ang layunin lamang ay malaman kung ano ang magiging epekto ng isang intervention sa kanila. Ang survey research design ay isang halimbawa naman ng non-experimental research design. It is used to gather information from group of people by selecting and studying samples chosen from a population. It may be done in various ways like face-to-face, -face, phone call, mail, and online. Surveys generally ask respondents to report on their attitudes, opinions, perceptions, or behavior. Ang isang halimbawa naman ng survey research ay ang customer satisfaction rating na kung saan ang bawat ahensya ay regular na nagpapasagot ng questionnaire upang malaman nila ang tugon o opinion ng kanilang mga customer sa serbisyong ipinapakita nila. Ang descriptive research design ay isa pang halimbawa ng non-experimental research design. 
It is used for portraying a population that has been chosen because of some specific characteristics. It is also used to determine the extent or direction of attitudes and behaviors. It may be used to develop theories, justify current political practices, or identify problems. Ang halimbawa ng karaniwang paksa sa descriptive research ay ang pag-aaral kung ilang oras ang ginugugol ng mga kabataan sa paggamit ng social media. Bilang ng mga malnourished na estudyante na bumabagsak sa mga pagsusulit, mga suliranin ng mga medical frontliners, at iba pa. Comparative research design is a design that is used to compare and contrast representative samples from two or more groups in relation to certain designated variables that occur in a normal conditions. Ang halimbawa nito ay ang pag-aaral kung sino ang may mas maraming isyong pangkalusugan. Ang mga nakatira nga ba sa probinsya o yung mga nasa syudad? Correlational Research Design This design is used to investigate the direction and magnitude of relationships among variables in a particular population. It is designed to study the change in one characteristics or phenomenon which corresponds to the changes in another or with one another. Ang halimbawa nito ay pag-aaral ukol sa relasyon ng dami ng mga tao na nagsusot ng face masks at pagbaba ng bilang ng kaso ng COVID-19 sa ating bansa. Ito ay pag-aaral din tungkol sa relasyon na madalas na traffic at dami ng mga aksidente sa lansangan. At ang panghuling halimbawa ng non-experimental research design ay ang evaluative research design. This design involves making judgment of worth or value. It can be an informative or summative. Evaluation research is conducted to elicit useful feedback from a variety of respondents from various fields to aid in decision-making or policy information. Ang halimbawa naman nito ay ang paggamit ng mga test o ang pilot testing na mas kilala upang malaman kung nagiging epektibo nga ba ang parean ng pagtuturo o masukat kung angkop nga ba ang curriculum na napili para sa mga mag-aaral. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoy learning with you. I am Teacher Randy. Happy to serve.